Well, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the campus of Port St. Lucie High School on this Patriots Day, September 11th, 2021. I'm Alan Slaughterzinski, joined alongside our production and cameraman and broadcast partner, the Countdown Man, Caleb Brown, as we have Saturday night football for you tonight between the Heritage Panthers and the Port St. Lucie Jaguars. Tonight's broadcast is brought to you by Scott Sporting Goods. My man Mike Moffitt last night, the Adidas Bowl got rained out, but Mike Moffitt, October 4th, Vero and Vieira. I was going to say, look, Vero and Vieira Beach. How many times would I have done that in the broadcast last night? Vero. One other rescheduled. Uh, Titusville Space Coast, October 8th. All right, Space Coast and Titusville, October 8th. That's really the storyline uh, of Friday night last night was the weather. This game obviously rescheduled to tonight. You had Space Coast and Titusville as I'm just told, is rescheduled uh, October the 8th. Vero Beach and Vieira, October 4th. Uh, Holy Trinity is also in action tonight. Uh, they are up in Largo, Florida, taking on IRC. All right, what we have here tonight is a very, very winnable football game for the Heritage Panthers against Port St. Lucie. Port St. Lucie comes in at 1-0, and oh, but that one victory was over uh, St. John Paul Academy, I believe. Uh, big win in that one for the Jags. And, of course, last week, Heritage led that football game throughout against Harmony. But Harmony, the Longhorns, would come back in the end there to get the victory. And, oh, by the way, Harmony almost did the same thing last night to Palm Bay. Speaking of high school football last night, uh, the Palm Bay Pirates moved to 2-0 uh, with a victory in their game last night. How about the Satellite Scorpions as we get set for the National Anthem and everything here uh, on this September 11th Patriots Day? Satellite Scorpions with a 13-7 win last night over the Melbourne Bulldogs and a couple of takeaways from that game last night. Uh, satellite showing as they have moved back from independent into uh, – you know, state series play showing that they can win football games anyway. They can win them uh, scoring a lot of points as they did in week one and week two with 37 points on the board. And last night showing they can win defensive battles as they have uh, a 6.13-7 win in that one last night as well. So uh, we are set for the national anthem here. And uh, – Normally, we would take a commercial break during the National Anthem, but we're not going to do that today for obvious reasons. So uh, the National Anthem, and I'm going to kind of lean the headset over so that you can hear it. Obviously, 20 years ago today, uh, where were you on arguably one of the, not arguably, uh one of the saddest days in American history 20 years ago today. And tonight we, we honor that day playing a football game. And, and I like it. Sports heels. Please remain standing for the presentation of colors by the Port St. Lucie High School Jaguar Battalion. Commander of the color guard is Cadet Major Mary Quinta. Right guard. Having some technical difficulties. Probably be better off just play the uh, national anthem.
All right, we're ready for high school football action Saturday night style here on the Brevard Sports Network. Once again, tonight's game is brought to you by Walk-Ons. Hope you get an opportunity on Friday nights to check out the Brevard Sports Network Walk-Ons postgame show live. We were there last night for that. Also brought to you by Slow and Low Barbecue. Just an outstanding job uh, with their barbecue up there. I don't know what they do to that barbecue, but it is absolutely amazing. How about Sun Shop Solar, your solar coach, Dan Hancock. Solar Energy is uh, – been, you've, been, you've been told now for 25 years that solar energy is the wave of the future. It's here. Uh, give Dan a call, and all of the bottom banners will flash up on the bottom of the screen throughout the broadcast tonight. Uh, also, too, the 321 scholarship program, the 321 Sportscast scholarship program as well. Tracy Rayum over at 321 Sportscast does a great job raising money for student athletes. Uh, he gives away a $500 scholarship, and that's where we'll begin with our sponsorship here tonight with the 321 scholarship program. All right, let's get the scoreboard turned on. I'd like to welcome in Greg Gage, who says, Go Big Blue. Devin Alves watching here tonight as we get set for high school football action. Obviously, the Jaguars will be in all red. Heritage tonight in their white jerseys with their black hands, pants and their blue helmets. Heritage is led by head coach Mark Ainsley, the highest tenured head football coach tied with Holy Trinity's Nate Hooks. 66 wins for Mark Ainsley at Heritage. And one stretch, the Panthers won four out of five district championships uh, and a four district championships in a five-year span. Here come your captains on the field tonight. For the Heritage Panthers, number 65 is Logan Kinzel. And number three is senior linebacker, running back Bryce Harris. The other coaches for the Heritage Panthers are Tim Baker, Mike Benson, Bill Palmer, Brooke, Brooke Lubelski, Dan Holmes, Scott Raymond, Ed Kinzel, Brian Osterley, Josh Hungerford. And we'd like to thank the staff and administration at uh, – Heritage High School as well, Principal John Harris, Dr. John Harris, and Athletic Director, Mr. A.J. Almer. Some guy named Palmer, too. It's, uh, he usually finds his way around Heritage Panther games. He floats around a little bit. His son, too, I think, has appeared on a Brevard Sportscast or two. Well, just, you know. <laughs> he does a great job. He does a great job, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, he. I tell you what, he's a natural at it. He really is. I tell you, him and uh, Caleb and uh, Coach Blue, what a job those three guys are doing. I'll never get it. The only reason Caleb's with me tonight is because it's a Saturday night game and Billy's off doing West Melbourne stuff today. They're in, uh, they're in Bell Glades. Bell Glades, Florida today. Billy Mons will go to South Beach. They Did they win? All right. Okay. <laughs> the grind never stops, does it, Coach? <laughs> and on the field, your captains for Port St. Lucie are number four. That's Will Diaz. He's a senior outside linebacker. And number 52, that's Eric Hernandez. He's a junior outside linebacker, defensive lineman. Now, for those of you that might be watching from Port St. Lucie and going to want to yell at me, uh, into the broadcast tonight and say, this guy's a homer. That's correct. That's why it's called the Brevard Sports Network. But I try to call a fair game, and uh, we're off and running here. I have no idea who the officials are, but that's okay. I will. probably best for them. We don't. <laughs> All right, as Port St. Lucie will receive, back deep is number two, Fred Griffin the third, and number eight, Ricky Cooper. And set to kick off for the Heritage Panthers is number 26, and that's Romel Spence. 
junior linebacker. He gets set to put toe to leather, as my good friend Anthony Knockreiner says. And we are set to play football on a Saturday night. We already had a uh, big upset in college football today, Oregon over Ohio State today. Actually, it's number two kicking, number three kicking off. It's going to be uh, Bryce Harris. No, never mind. I was right the first time. And the ball, and he'll be down at the 25. He slips and falls. I imagine the field's slick. We didn't have an opportunity to walk on it. It was all we could do to get through the gate. We got here, and it was a lightning delay. I'd like to welcome in my man, Justice Durant. On the broadcast, Mr. Nine touchdown himself. Ninety-five yard touchdown run last night for Justice Durant. That's nine touchdowns this year that young man has. Tonight's broadcast is also brought to you by Franz Polomis and Mental Warfare Fitness. All right, in motion, and straight up the middle goes number eight, Ricky Cooper. And that'll be a gain of six on first down. Five. Actually, this is our second game today, too. We did the Sun Tree Vera Youth Football. Caleb did volleyball this morning. Nearly got up at 6 o'clock this morning to do cross country. But, uh, yeah. Hunter Turner watching. Welcome in, Hunter. Oh, big stick by the Panthers. Breaking through there was number 55. That's Kevon McCullough, the senior defensive end. 5'11", 240, flexing muscle, breaking through the line, and it's second and 10. He's doing his best impression of uh, Aaron Donald there. That, that's exactly what that was, his best impression of Aaron Donald. Good call there, Caleb. Heritage starts out with four down linemen, two linebackers. It's a 4-2 set. They got five defensive backs from the gun now. Two wide receivers split wide to the right. Quarterback turns, fires, throws underneath. And I tell you what, he's going to be short by a yard. And the reason he's going to be short is because Trace Libertor came up and popped him to prevent him from getting the extra yard of gain. It's that would be a first down. The other Heritage defensive backs did their job. They hung on, and Libertor came up and popped him. I always say you're going to get three things with the Mark Ainsley head coach team. You're going to get fast. You're going to get physical. That ball, this is all kinds of movement here. See what the call is. Could be a false start here, I believe. Yes, indeed, it will be. That will back them up five yards, which makes that play – by Trace Libertor and that Heritage defensive secondary on that pass even bigger now. So that'll be fourth and seven. Back to punt for the Jaguars is number seven. There's a snap. He's in. Just barely gets it away. Got to stretch out for that. Got to stretch out. Would have had it. And this is where Joseph Tenta and the Heritage Panthers will start at their own 45. We'll step away. No score here from Port St. Louis. All right, I don't get NFL TV timeouts, that's for sure. Joseph Tenta and the Heritage Panthers, three wide receivers split wide to the left. Tenta, two-step drop, turns, throws. Oh, nearly intercepted. Dropping the ball was Javaris Desiree. And that's why he's a linebacker and not a wide receiver. Antenna 
Looking at second and 10. The strength of this Heritage Panther offense is undoubtedly the returning offensive line up front. Alberto Baez, the center, will give you the rest of them coming up in just a second. The give is to Tayshawn Benson. Benson cuts it back outside. He'll be brought down for a gain of one. You also have got Alex Withrow, Logan Kinsel up front, Kevon McCullough, and Luke Ainsley. I'd like to welcome in Lee Latner, Parker, watching. Parker says, uh, yep, October 8th, the new date for Space Coast and Titusville. So this is going to be third down and eight for Joseph Tenta. Three wide receivers split wide to the left. Tenta, two, three-step drop under pressure, in trouble, down goes Tenta. And in on the stop is number 32, Elijah Uhas gets in there. And the Heritage Panthers like the uh, Port St. Lucie Jaguars, will go three and out. Lee says, dangerous pass in traffic there. Yes, indeed, that was. I think it's important to remember the process here as well for the Heritage Panthers. You're still looking at an extremely, extremely young football team. Your quarterback is a sophomore. Um, he's progressing. Yeah. That ball bounces. Nice end over and punt. That ball will take a Heritage Panther bounce and go all the way down to the 15-yard line. 45 yards unofficially on the punt, and this is where Port St. Lucie will take over with 8.17 to play in the first quarter. Today's broadcast is also brought to you by 7v7elite.com. We did not get an opportunity to do the 7v7 elite. Well, we, we tried uh, to do the 7v7 elite pregame show last night, but as we got about three minute, and a half, four minutes into it, we were informed that Vero and Vieira was postponed. First and 10 for the Jags. Little screen inside to the wide receiver, number 13, Alan Graham. And Graham will pick up four, maybe five. It'll bring up second and five. Take that all day long. Call it six. Nope, call it five. Second and five. Billy says, Caleb with you. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. like to welcome in Brevard Sports Network commentator Bill Palmer, coach, West Melbourne coach. Sometimes coach of Heritage, sometimes coach of Melbourne, sometimes coach of you name it. Nice, nice. That's a nice play. That ball's out. And the Heritage Panthers, Kevon McCullough, comes up with it. And the Panthers are in business just outside the Mental Warfare Fitness Red Zone at the 22-yard line. McCullough what? So McCullough will get the forced fumble and the recovery. Kevon McCullough already with a sack and a forced fumble and a fumble recovery in this one. It's a heck of a start in the first five and a half minutes of play, four and a half minutes of play. Benson this time will split wide left. You're back in the backfield is L.J. Turner. Tenna one-on-one, got his receiver. And he just threw it out of bounds. The intended receiver was Cameron Pollard. Moore, the senior. And I think Tenna had him down there. Man on the coverage was number 44, Jonathan Wilson. No, I'm sorry, check that. Number 14, Mike Tolbert. Splitting wide to the left is Jackie Baldry for Heritage. Wide to the right is Pollard Marr again. Tenna, man in motion. Pitch to Turner. Turner, blockers in front. Nice run by L.J. Turner. He'll pick up six, maybe seven, and that'll bring up. Sure do wish he'd get that problem corrected. Third and three for the Heritage Panthers, and I'm talking about the uh, 
the speaker system. This is obvious four down territory now that the ball is inside of the uh, mental warfare fitness red zone. Caleb, uh, what would you call here? On third and three? Yes. All right. The gunslinger known as Caleb Brown. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you, right. Caleb likes a play action shot to the end zone here. Let's see what happens. Turn gives to Turner straight up the middle. Or actually, he's a little off tackle there. And he is going to have enough for a Heritage Panther first down. Once again, inside of the Mental Warfare Fitness Red Zone. So, pot, 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 pot. What's pot, Caleb? Points off turnovers. It's critical. And we are going to hit the water break with the Heritage Panthers driving 628 to play in the first quarter. Back after these words here on Brevard Sports Network. Hello, Space Coast. Alan Slaughterzinski for the Brevard Sports Network. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your support of BSN and allowing us to cover your student athletes and come into your home each and every night. Give us a follow on Facebook at Brevard Sports Network, and here's the many more years of top-notch sports coverage right here in Brevard County. Thanks again. This is homeowner Harry. He's a family man, and today he's examining his utility bills. He's wondering why his utility costs, especially the cost of energy, is so high. He wishes there was an alternative that could cost him lower than his present bills. All right, welcome back, and I'd also like to welcome in my man Alex Williams to the broadcast. Williams with another strip sack, whatever touchdown yesterday and an interception. He and Justice Duran of the Bayside Bears continue to make their push for offensive, defensive play, touchdown! Heritage Panthers, L.J. Turner on the left side. It parted like the Red Sea, and Turner followed his blocks and into the end zone, 4-6. That's a good point by Kale, of patience by Turner there. He let the left side of that line do their job and do their job. They most certainly did. 6 nothing Heritage on top here. Here's the extra point. The snap, the hold, the kick is up. I don't know how, but it is good. And it is 7 to nothing Heritage. So they do indeed get points off turnovers. L.J. Turner on a about seven eight yard run there, and the Heritage Panthers take a road take a lead on the road here for seven. Like and and going back to what I was saying about Alex and Justice, fifty four nothing. Now look, I know Alex and Justice are watching, so I'm just gonna put this out there. You got uh, Titusville right on their way back. Okay, you've got two games that you've played so far, and games that. You did. You handled your business. Next week is the Rockledge Raiders for Bayside. Show me something, gentlemen. I know you will. I know you both will. So, good luck next week in your game against the Raiders. 7 nothing here. And that's a decent kick. End over end. Wynn kicks it back upfield to the 20. Put his knee down. He put his knee down, so that ball will be first and 10 for the Jags at the 15-yard line. L.J. Turner off the fumble created and recovered by Kevon McCullough, and it's 7-0. Heritage on top. Panthers looking for their first win of the 2021 season now they did win the kickoff classic against melbourne what a game that was you saw it live here on brevard sports network as caleb brown and billy palmer handled the duties in that one. First and 10 three wide receivers split wide to the right quarterback cuts it back he goes nowhere devin mcdonald the 
sophomore defensive end. I tell you what, that's a good play by a sophomore who didn't get sucked downfield, held his ground, forced the quarterback to turn in, and he was there to make the tackle. Second and 10 for, I keep wanting to call him Jacksonville. They could probably play with the Jags. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, Jaguar fans. Half heartedly. All right, little swing pass out to the back, and that goes nowhere as see who that is. Get the number on. That was Bryce Harris over there, the linebacker. And that swarm gang defense. 5 13 to play, first quarter. 7 0 Heritage on top. Be third down and 11 now. I'd like to welcome in Dan Hunger, Dwayne Robinson, Patricia Arnold, Parker, I can never say your last name, Scott Christian, third and 11. Looking to throw, Santiago Rodriguez. And I tell you what, that's why you extend every limb you have. And Zach Clevero did that there. I'm missing part of his name. What's it? What is it? C. Gene. Zach Clevero, C. Gene on the stop, and that'll bring up fourth and five. And Port St. Lucie forced the punt. Uh, district plays, we've already actually had a couple of district games with the way the schedules are now. Oh! He ran right by at that time, but the ball will be down. And Heritage will start with great field position. Now, now is the perfect time for your play action shot to the end zone. Yeah, actually, uh, with the way the schedule is created now, um, district play, can you can get district games in week one now. Some coaches still do it the old school way where they want them at the end of the year. But, like, for example, um, I know, I think O'Galley's already played a district game. Her I, Heritage, Heritage has already played a district game, haven't they? Against Harmony. No? No? Okay. Yeah, O'Galley played Rockledge last night. That's a district game. First and ten. Tenta with two backs in the backfield. And Tenta looks to throw. Steps up. Tenta's going to keep it. He's going to, ooh. Joseph Tenta didn't force anything there. He picks up two, second and eight. I'd like to welcome in Miss Monique Turner watching. I think that Melbourne offense will get it turned around down there. Coming up at halftime, you're going to hear, we keep talking about Billy Palmer. Coming up at halftime, you're going to see the interview Billy did last night with Coach Ted Kimmy of the Satellite Scorpions after the Scorps moved to 3-0 with a win over the Bulldogs. Can't remember the last time Satellite beat O'Galley and Melbourne in the same season. Give up the middle. Nice balance showed by L.J. Turner. Turner put his hand on the ground, held his balance, Picks up five, third and about a, about a yard. Jordan Sims on the stop for the home team Jaguars. Third down and short. And with the way that Heritage defense is playing, this is four down territory. Ten of turns, gives to Turner. Turner cuts it back inside, and Turner still – Turning those legs, and Turner picks up 12, and he only needed one. That is a big blue first down, and they're moving the football. Alabama at the half. They are only winning 51-0. I think the spread in that game was 54. 2.20 to play first quarter. Why do you need to play? Seriously, though. I don't like the guy that we were listening to this morning on the radio. Who was it? Uh, 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 Andrew Filippone. Yeah, Andrew Filippone. Guy's a tool. But 
He's right. Why does Alabama need to play Mercer? It's first and ten at the 25 to give his to Turner. Turner cuts it inside. Same place he went to score that touchdown. And I'll tell you what, they're doing a great job over there on that left side. Connor Robinson over there. Number 60, Connor Robinson. Or I'm sorry, that's Luke Ainsley. Luke Ainsley over there. Tenta gets the play from head coach Mark Ainsley. Yeah, I hear you, Micah. That's for sure. Money game. Maya Mercer, that's called sacrificing your players. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. It's all about that when it comes to those. Tenta turns, play action, throws. Tayshawn Benson, end zone, nearly had it. Nice try. Nice try by Benson. Benson, the 5'11", 175-pound sophomore, is going to be doing big, big things. Humble young man. That is for sure. It's my goal to get an interview with that kid. That's my it's, I, I, it's, it's my goal. I'm going to get an interview with him. Even if, I gotta, even if we got to do it somewhere where nobody else is watching, I'm going to get an interview with him. Second or third down and one for Tenta. Man in motion is Nakari McIntyre to give his to Turner. Turner again on that left side, and that left side is just dominating the PSL defensive front. Just to say, got to have those. That would have been number 10 for you, huh? <laughs> Bayside and Rockland. Where's that game next week? Okay. Yeah, well, that eliminates us. Yeah, I know. Pitch, quick pitch to Turner. Turner cuts it back. That's a great read by L.J. Turner inside of the Sun Shop red zone. He read his block beautifully, cut it back inside, and he picks up eight yards, seven yards. Second and a long three, three and a half here, Texas A&M. Yeah, yeah, I can see it. All right. Tend to knock, 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 and on the door here again. This time it is Nakari McIntyre, and that's the end of the first quarter with the Heritage Panthers. Thanks to an L.J. Turner nine-yard touchdown run. They lead it seven to nothing. Back with the start of the second quarter in just a minute here on the Brevard Sports Network. This is homeowner Harry. He's a family man, and today he's examining his utility bills. He's wondering why his utility costs, especially the cost of energy, is so high. He wishes there was an alternative that could cost him lower than his present bills. Luckily for him, there is. Here's Dan from Sun Shop at his door. Dan has come to explain to him how going solar can help him lower his utility costs and solve his worries. Homeowner Harry lets Dan in and he explains to him how the sun will fuel his home when he goes solar. Dan also breaks everything down to him on how his bills would be lower and he'll be helping the planet in his own little way at the same time. He was pleased with all what he has heard about going solar with SunShop. Thanks to Dan from SunShop, his home is now powered by solar and now he's all smiles and happy. No worries for him as he's now in control of his monthly utility bills. Contact Dan with SunShop below today to go solar too. Hi, this is Michelle Rycroft with Beach Wave Volleyball Club, and you're watching Brevard Sports Network. All right, I'd like to thank Coach Michelle Rycroft from Beach Wave Volleyball Club. She's also the head volleyball coach at O'Galley High School as well as the Heritage Panthers look to finish off a drive here. They started on their own 45 inside the Beach Wave Volleyball Club red zone. Ball, second and four. Four on the five. I'd like to welcome in the legendary Barbara K. Wood watching here on Brevard Sports Network. Nakari McIntyre, little pass caught. 
Oh, did he hang on? No, he bobbled it. He catches it, but he was juggling it, hauled it in, out of bounds. Who is the attendant receiver there? 25. That's Kane Avilia, the tight end. That's going to bring up third down and goal. Oh, correction, Alabama's winning 31-0. Is that all? But the spread is 54, so maybe Mercer can cover that. Debating whether to start. Well, I'll talk about that coming up. Third and four. 11.53 to play in the half. Straight up the middle. He's going to be short. Decision time for Mark Ainsley. Nakari McIntyre is going to pick up maybe one. Fourth down and short now. And I would think with the way that that defense is playing right now, it's a no-brainer here to take a shot. You can still pick up a first down without picking up the touchdown, but you definitely want the six here. And Joseph Tenta has talked his coach into it, and here comes the Heritage offense on fourth and two. What would you do here, Caleb? Quickly. Pass. And they are, got numbers right now. and they are bringing the house. And we got flags, and I think we're going to get a timeout. Timeout. So, so Heritage wanted to take a look at the defense to see what they could do offensively here. I don't think I'd throw the ball here. I think what I would do is I would do some sort of designed quarterback run. I think your quarterback is big and strong enough to lean forward f for a yard should he get stopped. But I think you can um, – I don't know if there's an option, some sort of a option in the arsenal, something like Kirk Herbstreet used to run back in the day at Central High School in Ohio. They'd be like, where'd you get that? I just happened to be listening to his book. <laughs> hey, it's a good book. It's a good book. 7 nothing. Heritage on top here. Look, uh, you know, again, we were talking about the, the things that a Mark Ainsley coach team always has. Speed is one of them. Speed and, you know, they, they, they're they a well-conditioned team. Speed and they're always going to be physical. Those are the three things. So you can't go wrong with trying to pitch to L.J. Turner here. I may try it short side, though. I may go to the right. They do. Great play call by Caleb. And what a play. The only guy that had to make the play Made the play, T.J. Shuck, and they stopped the Panthers on fourth and short. Toledo beating Notre Dame 29-24 with a buck 16 left. Well, I thought last week when Florida State put up all those points on Notre Dame that I, I didn't see Notre Dame as a potential college football playoff team this year. Those Mac teams, man, I'll tell you, Mac. They're scrappy. They're scrappy. First and ten now for the Jags. They'll take over on their own six from the shotgun, the quarterback. And he's from his own end zone in trouble. He gets out, and he's got all kind of green grass to run to. That's a block in the back. Nope. Diego Rodriguez, though. Gets him, I guess not, from my vantage point, it looked like it, but I guess not. Diego Rodriguez gets him all the way out to the 25-yard line. That's a 20-yard run for Rodriguez, who made the decision quick, and a smart one it was. First and 10 for the Jags, ball at the 25. 10.50 to go, first half. 7-0, Heritage on top. Billy Palmer, when you coming to watch those Hawks? First and 10 throws, caught underneath. Good play, pitch and catch. That's Ricky Cooper on the reception. These, these two teams have played four times. Heritage is 3-1 and one all time against the Jags. They've won three straight over them. The last time these two teams got together was back in 2014. That was a 51-14 Heritage win.
He said that's prime time. Now, nah, Billy, come on. You can come. I, I'd love to have you in the booth. Me, you, Logan, Blue, let's all do it on Monday, October the 4th. We'll do we'll do the ESPN broadcast for that one. We'll have two broadcasts for that. What do you say, Billy? Yeah. Billy's thinking Palm Bay and Merritt Island next week. Well, Palm Bay and Merritt Island it is. Yeah. I'll reach out Monday. So, well, why don't we do that for Monday, October 4th? Why don't we do like an ESPN type thing where we have two separate broadcasts. Me and Logan Pettit will be on one. You, Billy, and Coach Blue on the other. Billy says, let's do it. I'm in. Throws. Caught. Underneath. That's a first down. Nice catch by Robert Tatum. Tayshawn Townsend on the coverage. And this is the most significant amount of yardage that PSL has picked up today. Yeah, we're going to do that. Yep, that's what we're going to do for that October 4th game. Special, special two, two, yeah, mega cast. We'll do a mega cast that night. First and ten. Yeah, that's for sure. Ball on the 37-yard line. Throws little wide receiver out. And I tell you what, that's seven yards in Port St. Lucie's moving the football. Right now, they've traveled 40 yards. Allen Graham on the catch. And the one thing you don't want to do is let a struggling quarterback find a rhythm. And right now, Santiago Rodriguez has found him a rhythm. Second and two for the Jaguars. Keep your eye on this coverage down here at the bottom of the screen. Three on two. See how they they work it. And it's a bubble screen. Bubble to the wide receiver. He gets outside, cuts it back in. That's coming back. That's going to be a penalty on Denzel Coe for a block in the back. That'll be a 10-yard penalty. Yeah, they did play it well, but all they needed was three, so they got what they wanted from the play. The problem is, is Denzel Coe held or blocked in the back. So now it's going to be third down and 12. Yeah, Parker says, well, well you know, that is an extremely – deep backfield at Penn State. I mean, it is. You got to keep in mind, uh, Kaziah picked up that other year of eligibility with COVID. Uh, so he's going to have his chance at Penn State to shine. There is no doubt about that. Remember, remember that first year and a half, Jay Hawkins was at Louisville. He seriously thought about transferring. I mean, he was depressed. He was down. He was out. And uh, he'll get his shot second and twelve for Port St. Lucie. Pump fake, wheel route, and Rodriguez will be sacked. Great backside pursuit by Tajay Douglas. Was that Douglas? Uh, seven. seven. Devin McDonald. My spotter told me wrong. Devin McDonald. That's okay. So Devin McDonald gets the sack, and what was a pretty good drive has suddenly hit the Swarm Gang wall. Two wide receivers split wide to the near side. Two wide receivers wide to the left. Keep your eye. On the coverage down here on the bottom. Tayshawn Benson on it. Quarterback not even looking this way. Throws deep, deep down the field. Tayshawn Townsend on the coverage there. The intended wide receiver was number 13, Allen Graham. And that's going to bring up fourth down and about 19 yards to go. And PSL, after picking up 40 yards in three plays, 
has stalled and is now forced to punt. Parker, let me just say this, buddy, if I could for a minute. I'll wait till after the punt. The only reason I watch a Miami game is for Clay James. The ball's out on the ground, and that will be Heritage Ball inside the Beach Wave Volleyball Club red zone. And the snap was there, the punter, not sure what he did. Just drop the ball. And that'll bring up the water break. We'll step aside, and we'll be back with 6.48 to play in the first half. 7 nothing Panthers, but they're knocking on the door. It all started with a sketch on a napkin. An idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk Ons, because everyone needs a little playing time. Thanks to the Merritt Island cheerleaders for the bring back. It's first and 10 ball at the 18. As Caleb so eloquently pointed out, Heritage right now leading 7 to nothing, but winning all three phases of the game. The give, Tenta keeps up the middle. Joseph Tenta touchdown from 18 out, and it's 13 nothing Panthers. Nice read by Tenta. Tenna pulled the ball back from the belly of his back, say that five times, and kept it up the middle for the 18-yard touchdown. On for the extra point is Kane Avila. Snap, hold, kick, Avila. It's good. So the Panthers needed just... One play following the botch punt, and it's 14-0. Great play by Tenna on that one. Now, I'm going to give the plug here where it belongs. When you see, we saw uh, Eddie Combs do it. We saw C.J. Sims do it. And there you see Joseph Tenna do it. That speed up the middle and the confidence to keep the ball – those treads at Uberzati are no joke, man. Those young men have been on those treads all summer long at Uberzati. In fact, I interviewed Joseph Tenta over there earlier this summer about those treads and about his workouts. And right there, you just saw a quarterback who's got some speed, not known for his speed, sprint through the secondary of the PS, uh, sprint through the PSL secondary for a touchdown. So I have to think that those treads certainly have something to do with that. Uberzati, the information is on the bottom of the screen. And that ball fielded and downed at the 27 yard line. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Mike. Uh, those Coco Tigers last night were something else, man. You know, that's a football team that that smacked Miami Northwestern like they were a homecoming game in the kickoff classic. Turned around and did the same thing to Edgewater in week one. They shot to the top of the standings in 8A as the number one ranked team. I'll tell you a story here in just a minute. First and 10 for PSL. Little bubble screen here to the wide receiver. He's got room to run and I'll tell you what, quickly closing the gap on that was Isaiah Nieves, the senior, and that's a first down, though. I actually talked to Ryan Schneider on the phone Thursday night about the game. I had to let Coach Schneider know that we couldn't go over and stream because Venice was uh, had their own pay-per-view stream, and 
Coach Snyder said, well, okay, you know, not a big deal. We understand. Thank you for trying. Um, and then I asked him, then the next 45 minutes we talked about the game and I'll tell you what he told me he was going to do. Oh, the, the snap. And he's just going to have to, oh, my, Tayshawn Townsend. Let uh, Mr. Rodriguez know that's my corner. You won't turn it. And it's second and ten. So, he actually loses yards, second and 14. So, Coach Snyder told me what he was going to do in that game was keep the ball out of the hands of Venice. He told me he was going to shorten the game. He was going to make sure they won the time of possession battle. And he preached and preached and preached all week long to his offensive and defensive lines. They had to try their damnedest, if you will, to beat up the front of that Venice. And I'll tell you what, they did it. And Venice has some unbelievable athletes. I mean, they've got 13 D1 guys on that team, legitimate P5 D1 guys on that team. And Coco was an extra point away last night from tying and forcing overtime in that game. And let me tell you something. How many Brevard County teams have you ever known to start out against three 8A teams, three at the top? Oh, it looked like that was a pick six by Nakari McIntyre. Start out with against three of the top teams in 8A, and you go two and one against them. Both your victories are one point and your losses by one point. Just a, just a, You just couldn't ask for a better start. You could and be 3-0, and oh, but I don't think anybody thought the Tigers would be. Just a great effort by that entire team and coaching staff. It is one. There is never a, a, such a thing as an impressive loss. There just isn't. But that is a, a meaningful loss for that team that they, they will learn from. This ball. Wow, that ball just floated out there. What a pitch and catch. It's out. It's out. That's a fumble. All right. That's a turnover after 73-yard completion to Allen Graham. He was stripped at the four-yard line. He left the ball. Graham left the ball at the six. Heritage recovers, and that goes into books as nothing more than a 93 or a 73-yard turnover. What a play by Heritage. What a presence of mind to strip that football out. Instead of worrying about getting beat on the pass, you still tried to make a play, and it paid off. It paid off. Great job. Who stripped that? Who? Number two. Number two. Ja'King Joseph, what a job by Joseph. What a break here. And the Heritage Panthers with a 14-0 lead after a 70-plus yard pass completion. Alan Graham thought he had a touchdown. And see, that's the perfect example of running with the football in the wrong arm. You learn, Billy Palmer will tell you, right? All the coaches, that ball should have been in that left arm on that sideline because when that ball gets poked out, you know it's going out of bounds. He's carrying it in this hand. Mighty low while running. And it's a fumble. Raiders, Shane. Raiders. Our running backs right now are Le'Veon Bell, Latavius Murray, and Freeman. Yeah. So, Raiders, we've lost J.K. Dobbins, Justice Williams, and Gus Edwards, not to mention Marcus Peters as well. And to an, I don't know what the Ravens have on that turf. It's blowing that off, but they need to fix something. Yeah, the, the, Ra the Ravens aren't going to be very good to start the year. And we lost our first-round draft pick, Rashad Bateman. He's on IR, too, by the way. First and 10 for Tenta and this Panther offense. 5.39 to play here in the first half. Tenta, play action, steps up, throws. He's got a man, overshot him, had him. Tayshawn Benson 
was open. Man coverage there. Number 14 on the coverage. That was Mike Tolbert. Benson with two steps on him. And that'll bring up second. You know what? I would. Let me try it again. I don't even know if I'd go other side. I'd go right back after him again. He's gassed. Tenth to second and ten. Then it's time they give. And look at this. Cuts back. L.J. Turner out to the 50, 45, before he's finally brought down. But not before he picks up 29 yards and a Heritage Panther first down. What a run by L.J. Turner. Well, not only that, but I think the thing you need to notice on that play was Turner's knees. His knees were up to his chest through the hole. The ball was high and tight. It enabled him to break a few tackles in the middle and spring free. First and 10 ball on the PSL 44-yard line, we'll call it. Tenta from the gun turns, gives the Turner again. He says, I'll take it again. I'm not gassed. He'll carry the ball for a gain of about two, 450 to go. First half, 14 nothing Heritage on top. And we get a timeout on the field. Like to thank walk-ons and Jim Pettis. Another good post-game show last night. Coming up live here at halftime today, you'll see Billy Palmer's interview with Satellite Scorpion head football coach Ted Kimmy following last night's victory over the Melbourne Bulldogs to move the Scorps to 3-0. and Right now, that Heritage offensive line doing the job up front. The give is to Benson. Benson cuts it outside. Benson's got the sidelines. He's got a first down and eight more yards. That's an 18-yard carry by Benson, and that ball is spotted at the 27-yard line, 29-yard line. First and 10 for 11 to play, first half. And we're going to get another timeout. This time, Port St. Lucie will take the T.O., I'd like to welcome in here all way, Tiona Godwin, Janine Burris, Stacy Holmes, Jared Goodson, Shane Staples, Lori Day, Patty Fagan, Samuel Soria, D. Jackson, Keyshawn Nebred, all watching here on the Brevard Sports Network. We were, you know, we were pulling down here, and we happened to look down at our phones, and we relied very heavily on cell phone signals. And we happened to look, and we had one bar. And then we drove to the back of the lot, and bam, there's a tower. <laughs> First and 10 for Tenta and this Panther offense. Ball at the 29. Snakari McIntyre sets, settles, gives to L.J. Turner, but in on the stop is number 95. That is Albertini Excellent. I'd like to have a last name of Excellent. That's his name, Albertini Excellent. Second down and 12 for the Heritage Panthers, following the stop by Albertini, excellent. We welcome in Jay Haley, Kathy Pickering, and Patrick and Gary Murphy watching. 
Second and 12, three wide receivers to the left. McIntyre in the slot. Tenna looks, 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 throws. McIntyre's open, caught. Touchdown, Heritage Panthers. Joseph Tenna to Nakori McIntyre, 32 yards, 20 nothing, Heritage. Twenty to nothing. Three seventeen to go. Thirty-two yards. Tenta. That wasn't the prettiest of spirals, but it was certainly where it needed to be for the touchdown. On for the extra point is a villa snap kick and a villa three for three on the extra point. Nope. No good. Okay. No good. My 51-year-old eyes didn't see it right. So with 3.17 to play here in the first half, 32-yard TD pass from Tenna to McIntyre. It's 20 to nothing, Panthers. Back in a moment. At Slow and Low Barbecue Bar and Grill, flavorful hickory smoke meets carefully seasoned beef, pork, chicken, and ribs. And the results are out of this world. For a night out or dinner with the family, every visit is memorable. Generous portions of your barbecue favorites and more. And dishes you won't find anywhere else. Virtually all made from scratch. There's live music four nights a week. Indoor and outdoor seating. And a private banquet room for special events. Slow and low. Barbecue bar and grill. Good times. Great food. All right, thanks to Slow and Low Barbecue. 20 to nothing following the 32-yard touchdown pass from Joseph Tennant and Nakari McIntyre. And that's like a little, I'm not sure what that is. Not quite an onsider, but yeah, something like that. Almost had that one. The Jaguars will take over. I'd like to welcome in Daryl Durand watching here on the Brevard Sports Network. Three eleven to play in the first quarter, or first half rather. Joseph Tenta with a rushing and a passing touchdown. L.J. Turner with a nine-yard run. Two out of three on the extra points. The Panther defense has been lights out, and it's 20 to nothing. Throws, caught. Robert Tatum on the catch there immediately on the stop is Tayshawn Townsend, the 5'9", 170-pound sophomore. We all right? What are you doing? I could, I could see. That was fine. Second and two now. And that's going to be a loss of two. And that'll bring up third and three. Loss of one, actually. 2.20 to play. So the Panthers, scoreboard shows they have all three timeouts left. All right, here comes the PSL Jaguars, third down and three. Sorry, Lee, sorry about that, man. No, I'm not. Throws, oh. Actually, I think what happened was the receiver slipped and tripped the defensive back, which is why you don't see a flag on that one. It looked like a push, 
but it wasn't because the wide receiver slipped down and the DB wasn't expecting it. A good no call by the referee there. 138 to play. This is fourth down, and Heritage is going to get the ball back. I'd like to thank Franz Polamis and Mental Warfare Fitness. Fourth and three, and there's all kinds of motion up front. See what happens here as Tayshawn Benson is back deep. They're going to get that before the game is over. That ball will take a PSL bounce and go and be down on the 18-yard line, and that is where... That is where Joseph Tenta and the Heritage Panthers offense will take over. First and 72, 82 for Tenta. First and 82, you might as well call it, because they're not trying to get a first down here. They're trying to score with 129 to go. Touchdown here. And I'll tell you what, that's uh, like what I like what I see so far from this Heritage offense here today. Two wide receivers split wide to the right. Ten of turns gives to LJ Turner, who has some big runs in this one. And Turner just going to keep it on the ground. And I don't know that Heritage is going to try and stop the clock here. I think they're just going to maybe run one more play and maybe get to the locker room with a 20 to nothing lead. They will get the ball to start the second half. Coming up at halftime, Coach Billy Palmer and his interview with Ted Kimmy last night. You'll see that. Second and five. Tenta wants it. They're going to throw. Why not? Nice out pass. Caught. Cuts it back inside. Good play not to get out of bounds. Now maybe you take a chance and stop the clock here. Nice catch by Jackie Bowdry, the sophomore. There's a common theme with this team, the sophomore, the sophomore, the sophomore. 37 seconds in the Panthers. Right back to the line of scrimmage. Tenta, first and ten. Looks to throw, steps up, he's going to keep it. Tenta won't be sacked, but he'll be tackled. And that should. Now we're going to take a timeout. So the Panthers will take a timeout here with 25 seconds left. Yeah, I saw UCF going to the Big 12. In 2020, there's only one problem with that. That's not the Big 12. The Big 12 has Oklahoma and Texas in it. What UCF is going to is the AAC on steroids. So, I mean, you, you, can, you can call it whatever you want, but it's not the Big 12. Yeah, the Big 12 is merging with the SEC. That's exactly right. And you know what? By the time 2024 gets here, don't be surprised if there's already a scenario in, in, in play where there's four, a north, a east, a south, and a west. Because I'm telling you, the day's coming when Florida State and Clemson will join the SEC. I, it's going to happen. Second and seven. Tenta looks to throw. That's a much better looking ball. And that's not gonna and that's gonna be intercepted. No flag. 14.7 seconds to go. On the for the I don't yeah, if there was no flag on the last one, that's a good no call too. So the and I'll I'd be I'd also be willing to bet that 
I, I, I just don't think that the college football playoff committee is going to let Texas and Oklahoma leave the Big 12, and all of a sudden, teams like UCF and Cincinnati are going to be considered P5 teams. You know what I mean? I, I just don't see that scenario. First and 10th. And this will take us to the end of the first half. All right, a good first half. It got started for the Panthers with two turnovers in this half. And they scored on one. Kevon McCullough with a strip fumble and recovery. L.J. Turner would cash in on that to make it 7 to nothing. The Panthers would then score on a Joseph Tenta touchdown run to make it 14 nothing, And then... They would score on a Joseph Tenta 32-yard touchdown pass to Nakari McIntyre for 32 yards. Extra point failed, and the score is 20 to nothing. So that's where we are. We'll be back with the start of the third quarter. Here is last night's interview of the night between Coach Billy Palmer and Ted Kimmy of the Satellite Scorpions following their 13-7 win over Melbourne. Melbourne 7, Coach Kimmy. I'm a Bulldog grad. I coach here. This is your first win since 1995 here at Melbourne. You're doing great things at the satellite program. Me and Coach Blue spoke about that pregame. What does something like this mean for your program? I mean, this is a boost. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, shoot, I mean, Coach Kintag and Coach Panucci and Coach Grish, like, I mean, I know those guys so well. I got great relationships with them and just so much respect for that, that program. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, that's a tough, that's a tough hard-nosed football team, well-coached. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, I mean, you know, we're back in 5A. You know, we're not independent anymore. And, you know, we're, we're trying to not let this ride end. And, and, a, and a game like this against a great team, you know, we're, you know, just really not a lot going on offensively. But our defense, you know, making multiple stands at the end of the game is, is something we can build off of for the rest of the year. Absolutely, Coach. And uh, I apologize, but do you know the last time a satellite beat O'Galley in Melbourne in one season? Oh, in one season? Uh, whew, I I don't. I don't know. That's don't a difficult know. question. I don't know myself either. But no, it's, it's coach, been a, it's been a long time, if ever, if ever. Yeah. That, you guys are off to a great start. I mean, you guys move the football early. Um, Eddie Combs makes a big play. Two great big kickoff returns. I mean, what kind of player is Eddie Combs? Well, um, you know, he's he's a great he's a great obviously very talented, but he's an even better person. I mean, he's one of our team captains. He's got a 4.0 GPA. Uh, multiple offers to you know Division one schools around the country. Great family. Um, and so when you got, you know, your best player, it's also your best kid um, and, and your best teammate, uh, you know, a lot of good things can happen. So very proud of you. Coach, your offensive line played well. You know, they, they, they moved bodies at Melbourne. The defensive front is, is, is no slouch. I mean, talk about your offensive line's play tonight. Yeah, I'm proud of those guys. I actually coached the offensive line. I played it in college, uh, you know, played it at Army, and it's something I take great pride in. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll tell you, we got a couple weeks. We got a district game next week, um, and then, you know, we, we got a big game, you know, uh, any any district game is a big game, so we got a lot to clean up, no doubt. But uh, very proud of those guys for uh, you know leading the front and being the tip of the spear. So very 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 strong strong performance tonight. Absolutely, Coach Todd Wilson used to call those the money games. Those those are big games. So, Coach, going forward, uh, again, you're back in 5A. What what does the rest of your schedule look like? I mean, you guys can carry this momentum. Like I said, you guys have been running a very very respectful program. Um, you know that Satellite Beach Seahawks Youth League feeding you guys. I mean, I was telling Coach Blue again. What you've done in the last four or five years is, is absolutely remarkable for a program like Satellite because you guys used to come into places, you were at a homecoming game, and what you've done, what you, what you've done is remarkable, Coach. I appreciate that. And honestly, um, you know, I think one of the biggest things for me is I, I, I was here for, for those times. You know, I was an assistant coach um, when we had 22 kids and we were the homecoming game. So, you know, to have an appreciation um, for where we came from, you know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, we believe that you can't get to the light without going through the darkness, and, and we've been in some dark times. And um, but what we what we do is we remember those times, and we don't we don't just bury it. We use those times to fuel us, and uh, uh, we know that uh, you know we just don't want to go back again. You know, we don't want ever want to go back. Absolutely, Coach. Well, hey, I appreciate. You. At Slow and Low Barbecue Bar and Grill, flavorful hickory smoke meets carefully seasoned beef, pork, chicken, and ribs, and the results are out of this world. For a night out or dinner with the family, every visit is memorable. Generous portions of your barbecue favorites and more. 
and dishes you won't find anywhere else. Virtually all made from scratch. There's live music four nights a week, indoor and outdoor seating, and a private banquet room for special events. Slow and low barbecue bar and grill. Good times, great food. This is homeowner Harry. He's a family man, and today he's examining his utility bills. He's wondering why his utility costs, especially the cost of energy, is so high. He wishes there was an alternative that could cost him lower than his present bills. Luckily for him, there is. Here's Dan from SunShop at his door. Dan has come to explain to him how going solar can help him lower his utility costs and solve his worries. Homeowner Harry lets Dan in and he explains to him how the sun will fuel his home when he goes solar. Dan also breaks everything down to him on how his bills would be lower and he'll be helping the planet in his own little way at the same time. He was pleased with all what he has heard about going solar with SunShop. Thanks to Dan from SunShop, his home is now powered by solar and now he's all smiles and happy. No worries for him as he's now in control of his monthly utility bills. Contact Dan with SunShop below today to go solar too. It all started with a sketch on a napkin, an idea created by two walk-on bench warmers. And after 10 years of hard work and perseverance to turn their dream into a reality, it's the number one sports bar in America. Welcome to Walk On. Walk-ons, because everyone needs a little playing time.
All right, welcome back. Halftime here in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Alan Slaughterzinski with you. Seven minutes to go until we kick off the third quarter. It was an interesting night of high school football last night. Rockledge with a 34-0 win over O'Galley. Now, uh, not O'Galley's year this season. And uh, last night, O'Galley, uh, no pork chop Hayes. I think their quarterback was out as well. That's no excuse. Rockledge still wins the football game, no doubt about it. But when you don't, you know, when you're missing some players and you had a week like they had last week on a loss to Satellite. So, Coach Chris Sands, and you got a great coaching staff over there. They'll get it together. But how about that young quarterback, Traven Green, sophomore, another sophomore. If we watch sophomore Joseph Tenta here tonight, sophomore Traven Green doing a job, and he's got great outstanding wide receivers like Ryan Black, who he found for a touchdown pass to start the scoring last night. Rockledge, 26 sophomores on that roster, only going to get better. And the Raiders are 3-0. and oh. We talked about the Coco Tigers last night and their one-point loss to Venice, 21-20. But my goodness gracious, that is that was the top team. And we went over to Venice. I'll tell you a story. We went over to Venice a couple of years ago, Caleb and I, and we broadcast the game in a tropical storm. True story. On top of the press box in the rain with one umbrella, couldn't even keep the umbrella because the wind kept, you know, doing that thing it does to umbrellas. So we said, forget it. Let's just go. If We'll go as long as we can. Keziah Holmes with a 99-yard touchdown run. And Venice tore Coco up. Tore him up. Beat him by three touchdowns. And I think a lot of people felt like last night would be a little bit more of the same. Talked to Ryan Schneider on Thursday night. He said, no. He said, these young men and... And my coaching staff have been working hard all week. We think we have a game plan in place. We don't know if we're going to beat them, but we know we're going to give them a run for their money. And they certainly did that. Only a missed extra point kept the Tigers from forcing their second overtime in three weeks. They fall 21-20, but finish their 8A run at 2-1. and one, And all three wins or all, you know, two wins and a loss all by a one-point margin. Ty Coco with a well-earned week off next week. So what you saw, Billy, uh, Billy Palmer interviewing Ted Kimmy, the Satellite Scorpions. Business is booming on the beach as the Scorps get a 13-7 win over the Melbourne Bulldogs. We've talked about the success of satellite and what they've done and eddie combs continues to impress as does gage malkin and that scorpion defense led by coordinator rick dormany um melbourne melbourne i i'm not sure what the deal is right now with melbourne's offense they've got some outstanding talent quarterback hunter turner devin alves uh they've got some play that offensive line led by cody black they do a tremendous job uh, the issue is they've scored 13 points in 10 quarters. So that's got to get fixed if that program is going to make a run at Vieira by the end of the year. So Melbourne falls to 0 and 2, and Satellite moves to 3 and 0. Coco Beach falls to Lake Placid 54 0. Coach Ben Waldrop still process there at Coco Beach. Love Coach Waldrop. Perfect guy for the job. He is. Uh, he's going to get that program turned around, and the Minutemen uh, will be back as they continue to build from the 7th, 8th grade up, and uh, I like what Coach Waldrop and company are accomplishing or starting to, to do there in terms of numbers and off-season programs, and so keep your eyes on the Minutemen in the future. Uh, Space Coast in Titusville was Canceled last night because of weather, but the makeup date for that game is now October the 8th. Uh, also postponed last night was Vero Beach and Vieira in the second Adidas Bowl. The makeup day announced before we even left the broadcast booth last night. In fact, that game was canceled before 7 o'clock last night. Um, I guess there are uh, some outstanding meteorologists in the Vieira and Vero Beach communities because they called that game by 5 of 7 last night. Uh, and that game will be made up 
Monday, October the 4th. That's, that will be the Brevard Sports Network megacast that night. That's right. But uh, I tell you, uh, back to that satellite program, man. I, you know, I, I'll be honest. You know, when I looked at that schedule, I thought, well, two and two after the first four weeks. That's where I had them. I mean, you go back. The, the bad part about what I do is you can always throw what I say in my face. <laughs> right? Because it's on tape. Right, you smacked me right across the mouth with it, uh, and I said during the satellite preview that I honestly I felt like that it was still a process for the Scorps, like coming back from independent and jumping into five A. You know what? Um, I had them two and two after four, maybe six and four this year. I thought would be their ultimate best, but man, was I wrong. Uh, Coach Knox Robinson, Coach Rick Dormany, Coach Ted Kimmy, and what the rest of that staff has done over there. What can you say? I mean, my hat is off to the Scorpions, off to them. 3-0, and oh. and not only that, but they shut out a 7A program. They beat O'Galley, and then they beat another 7A program last night in Melbourne. My combined score is 74 and uh, 13 is uh, 87 to right now. Satellites outscored their opponents 87-23. Stats don't lie, and facts don't care about your feelings. So, who else am I missing from last night that played? No, 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 come on, we can remember this. Palm Bay, Coach Jake Owens, they moved to 2-0 last night. They get a win against Harmony. Harmony that uh, beat Merritt Island, beat Astronaut 34-0 last night. Uh, don't fall asleep on the Mustangs. Uh, I know Astronaut is having a down year this year, but do not fall asleep on the Merritt Island Mustangs. Bayside with a 54-0 win last night. Justice Durant with five more touchdowns in that one. Merritt Island Christian playing some eight-man football. They get another win. Uh, they're on their way back to a state semifinal state championship run this year in eight-man football. So, there we go. See, I told you we'd remember. All right, Heritage will receive to start the second half, and we start the second half with the broadcast brought to you by. Now, I know that that says... Vero Beach and Coco, or Vero Beach and Coco, Vero Beach and Vieira at the bottom. Uh, but that is the Adidas Bowl coming up October the 4th. Scott Sporting Goods will sponsor the kickoff here to start the second half. And, and it's going to be scooped up by Tayshawn Benson, and he gets it out to the 35-yard line. So it's 20 to nothing, third quarter, just underway here. Alan Slaughterzinski and Countdown Caleb Brown with you. Don't ask me. We just decided that's what we came up with. Countdown Caleb. We didn't like Caleb the cameraman Brown anymore. So we tried to figure something out here. And he's always going three, two, one. So we figured we'd nickname him Countdown. Yeah. Ten of turns gives to Turner. Turner bumps and slashes his way for a gain of about a yard and a half. And that'll be second and nine coming up. I'd like to welcome in. I can't see who's watching. It's all right. Once again, the kickoff to start the third quarter, sponsored by Scott's Sporting Goods, my man Mike Moffitt. You see the Vero Beach Vieira helmet. He's a big sponsor of the Adidas Bowl. Coming up October 4th, we're going to do a mega cast that night. Nakari McIntyre in motion, turns and gives to Turner. Turner, stiff arm. Get out of here. Number four, Turner on the carry 
L.J. Turner now puts the Panthers in a third down and six situation. Nice stiff arm there. All right, now I can see who's watching. Ryan Paez. There's the man, Mike Moffitt. Anthony Lansing. Lauren Hillman. Carol Upshaw. Felt bad last night because Mike and I had the pregame show all ready to go. Man, we were, bam, then we got canceled. Tenta. Nakari McIntyre throws. That's caught to Benson. Benson breaks a tackle. Great job by Tayshawn Benson. That was a nice throw by Joseph Tenta. Actually, his best of the game, including that touchdown. Uh, he put that ball right there on Benson's shoulder. Benson stuck his hand out, caught it in stride, turned, and was able to pick up the first down. Ball just on the PSL side of the 50. We'll call it first and 10 at the Port St. Lucie 49. 10 8 to play here in the third quarter. All Heritage Panthers 20 to nothing as they look to move the one and one. And Joseph Tenta turns, gives to, or keeps it. Tenta with room. Tenta with a stiff arm. Joseph Tenta says, excuse me, young man. I want that extra five. That's a gain of 15 and another Heritage Panther first down. Yes, indeed. We've seen a couple of, uh, I would imagine they practice that. You don't throw stiff arms that mean and nasty. Just out of the clear blue sky. Say hello to my little friend. And that time, and that, that's going to be 15-yard penalty. That was an over-energetic tackle there in which the ball carrier was lifted and thrown into the ground like he was drilling for oil. And that's 15 yards and a Heritage Panther first down. This is not amateur wrestling. Yeah, no, he body slammed him. Horse collar. Well, the referee called a face mask. So I guess he lifted him up by the horse collar face mask <laughs> and then slammed him down because he didn't grab any part of the face mask, I didn't think. First and 10 now, ball just outside of the Scott Sporting Goods red zone. Tenta looking to get the opening drive for his team into the end zone here. Tenta actually, Tenta waited a little too long to come off of that one. And it results in no gain. Now, that's a learning experience when you're watching film with him. He's got to make a quicker decision on that. But, again, he's just a sophomore. Second and nine, four down territory with a 20 to nothing lead. Ball on the Scott Sporting Goods 20. Fakes the pitch, Tenta in trouble. Oh, he nearly had, what, you know what? What a play by Joseph Tenta. That right there didn't get completed. It's an incomplete pass. He avoided the sack. That was Patrick Holmes-esque on the little flip there. You don't want to see that a lot because uh, you just say, look, man, uh, I appreciate the effort for the incomplete, but uh, so sometimes, you know, turns out to be a good play. I had a coach that would not have greeted me <laughs> so kindly. Yeah, I would have got the come here finger. <laughs> 20 to nothing, <laughs> to say the very least. Tenna turns, gives straight up the middle. There's the hole. Benson cuts back, and he is tackled at the three. What a run. That's a first down, and now it's first and goal to go inside the Scott Sporting Good red zone. Heritage looking to make it 27-0 here. First and goal to go on the run by Benson. 
McIntyre and Benson. McIntyre, the H-back. Benson, the deep back. Ten of the quarterback. Two wide receivers. We've got a whistle, 758, and a flag. It's, a, it's an equipment warning. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. Oh, no. No, no. All right, the equipment is taken care of. Benson splits wide. Tenta keeps it. Joseph Tenta in for his second rushing touchdown of the day, his third touchdown of the game, and pending the extra point, it's 26-0 Heritage. Seven forty-three to go, and the Heritage Panthers are comfortably in command. Zavilia comes on for the extra point. He's two out of three today. Ball spotted at the ten. Snap the hold, the kick, and that it's a Butte Clark, and it's twenty-seven nothing. Heritage. We'll be back with the kickoff in just a moment. Heritage Panthers twenty-seven, Port St. Lucie Jaguars nothing. Hello, Space Coast. Alan slaughter for the Brevard Sports Network. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank all of you for your support of BSN and allowing us to cover your student athletes and come into your home each and every night. Give us a follow on Facebook at Brevard Sports Network, and here's the many more years of top-notch sports coverage right here in Brevard County. Thanks again. Hey, this is Devon Dudley, and you are watching Brevard Sports Network. Oh, my brother, testify. Yes, indeed, testify. Here's the kickoff, little onside kick. Not sure why the Panthers are doing that. But anyway, Port St. Lucie will take over first and 10 at the 35. Are we frozen? Or are you frozen? Okay. All right. All right, first and ten now. I think we're okay on the stream. I don't know if it's lagging. Let me know if it's lagging. Give is up the middle. Don't want to see the Panthers give up the shutout here. 7.30 to play. 19.35 to go in the game. Third quarter. Twenty-seven to nothing. Heritage on top. Second and six now. Quarterback looks, pumps, throws. Not sure where that was going, but. Pass is incomplete, and that's going to bring up third down. Third down and six for Port St. Lucie. 6.55 to go. I know we'll have at least one more stoppage in the third for the water break. And then the fourth quarter, interviews, and an hour and a half back to Bivard. Bivar Third and six. Quarterback rolls to his right, looks, stops, pumps, keeps it, horse collared. Nope. Jersey, nice job. Got the jersey. Good play by Bryce Harris, I believe. And that's enough for a first down, though. Nice camera work there by Countdown. And 
to welcome in Diane Darby. Bill Muncy. Parker says Mercer scored 14 points on Alabama with 7.50 to go. Yeah, but all those guys were playing high school football in Miami last year. <laughs> right? I mean, Alabama's third string could have probably beat USF today. First and ten. Trap play. And there on the stop with a nice tackle is Connor Robinson. Robinson grabbed the legs and hung on, and his teammates finished him off. I think, I hope that's your phone doing that. Second down and eight, five fifty to go. Welcome in Craig Spencer, Coach Spencer from Coco. Nice job last night, Coach, you and your staff. There's Oh, they cut that off. They got him. They got him. And that's going to be a sack. McDonald with his second sack of the game. And it's going to bring up third and 11. Twenty-seven to nothing. Heritage on top. Third down and eleven. Four fifty to play. Port St. Lucie looking for their first points of the game. Little flare pass and nowhere to go. Nice job by Isaiah Nieves, the senior linebacker, and that's going to bring up fourth and a trip back to Brevard County for a first down. Back deep is Tayshawn Benson. I got to tell you, I don't know that they're – be careful on the fake here. The ball's at the 47-yard line. If ever you were going to fake a punt to try to look for momentum, right here's it. Field position dictates it. And they decide to kick it. Benson – has room to run, cuts back up the middle. Benson turns inside. He's going to be brought down at the 35. I know it may not have looked it, but Benson was probably one step away from breaking that. 3.57 to go, change of possession. Back with the rest of the third quarter and just a Hi, this is Michelle Rycroft with Beach Wave Volleyball Club, and you're watching Brevard Sports Network. I'd like to thank Claiborne Express Presser Wash. And we are back. That's going to be a first down by L.J. Turner. 3.45 to go, and the Panthers right now just running it down the throats of Port St. Lucie. That offensive line has just simply taken over this one. First and 10, ball at the 46-yard line of Heritage. Tenta turns, gives. Turner inside, stopped at the line of scrimmage. We'll see where the mark is, maybe a loss of one. Logan Kinsel down 
to be an official's timeout. Another chance for me to pay homage to a sponsor. Back in just a second here on the Brevard Sports Network. This is homeowner Harry. He's a family man, and today he's examining his utility bills. He's wondering why his utility costs, especially the cost of energy, is so high. He wishes there was an alternative that could cost him lower than his present bills. Luckily for him, there is. Here's Dan from SunShop at his door. Dan has come to explain to him how going solar can help him lower his utility costs and solve his worries. Homeowner Harry lets Dan in and he explains to him how the sun will fuel his home when he goes solar. Dan also breaks everything down to him on how his bills would be lower and he'll be helping the planet in his own little way at the same time. He was pleased with all what he has heard about going solar with SunShop. Thanks to Dan from SunShop, his home is now powered by solar. And now he's all smiles and happy. No worries for him as he's now in control of his monthly utility bills. Contact Dan with SunShop below today to go solar too. And indeed, high school bowl or high school bowling and volleyball both on the Brevard Sports Network. And we have got one whale of a volleyball match for you Tuesday night. As we have got the Satellite Scorpions and the Veer Hawks doing battle saw. And then Wednesday night again, we've got Merritt Island and Astronaut in volleyball. So we cover it all here on Brevard Sports Network. My apologies to Astronaut High School. We're not able to get out to the Astronaut open this morning for cross country this is LJ Turner Turner follows it LJ Turner 28 yards and a Heritage Panther first down he just put his hand on the shoulder of his blocker and followed him and took the yards afforded to him great play by Turner Tenta fakes, keeps, and Tenta keeps it up inside here. Touchdown in two gives us a running clock. Don't know that that'll happen, though. There's your scoreboard. I want to take this opportunity for those of you watching. Brevard Sports Network is a uh, privately funded company. And uh, what we do, like today, for example, getting into the car, we do not charge. Uh, we do have certain deals that we do, like with, uh, for example, we, we do have a contract, a paid contract, where we are covering all of your high school football games this year. But those are far and few between as Tenta quick pitches to Turner. Turner will, or breaks a tackle. Turner fights, still on his feet. Referee blows the whistle. So we do have limited sponsorships and partnerships throughout the community that helps fund some of the things we do. However, our growth has been simply tremendous thanks to all of you in the Brevard County community. So we ask, and uh, we know that times are tough, but even in uh, tough times, anything, and we mean anything helps. So uh, if you'd like to contribute to Brevard Sports Network and our ongoing growth and our the purchase and upgrade of equipment and cost of travel and we are really becoming what we think is is going to be the premier multimedia sports outlet in Brevard County. Um, put up our Venmo and our Cash App. And, again, even if it's just a dollar, anything helps. And that's going to be a flag there. So thank you. That's our Venmo. 52.6 seconds to go. Plus, I got to pay this guy next to me. And 
<laughs> Coach Palmer. Yeah, right? He said, my name is Bill Palmer. <laughs> That'll be another five yards. Right. <laughs> right. As if they need a ball. Right. <laughs> Clock running. First and five. 40 seconds to go. Third quarter. Tenta from the gun. Turns, gives. Tayshawn Benson. I want to see Benson cuts it back, cuts it back again. Finds a hole, runs out of his shoe. Or somebody did. I don't know if it was him. Oh, no, that was a wristband. Looked like a shoe from where we are. And that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. We're going to keep it right here, but I'm going to kill the sound. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter. 27 to nothing. Heritage in command. Joseph Tenta with three touchdowns here today. Two on the ground, one in the air. L.J. Turner with the fourth, 27-0. Heritage on top. That Swarm Gang defense has been just that here this afternoon. The give is to Benson. Benson off the left tackle. Inside touchdown, Heritage. Don't. Tayshawn Benson. And it's 33 nothing. Two makes it five, 35. Runs the clock. Got an official. It's an injury timeout. See him over there? In the end zone. So good to see Tayshawn Benson get in the end zone. Young man works hard. And it's 33 nothing. Let's see what Heritage does here. Do they go for two and try to run the clock? Or do they kick the extra point? This is me. I go for two. It's my second trip down here in as many days. Get that thing to 35 nothing. I'm telling my offensive line right now, give me that extra push. Let's go 35 nothing. Let's run this clock. Let's get back up 95, and let's get ready for next week. But I'm not the coach. I'm standing up here with the coach, but I'm not the coach. <laughs> I hope he's listening to go for two. <laughs> you got to execute it, though. You still got to get it in. Yeah, right. I know exactly I know exactly what you run to. What? Give it to Benson and tell him uh do what you do. Do what you do. I like your quick pitch here. I like your quick pitch. Now you may call it too fancy. Right. Step forward with, ten, with Tenta, and then the pitch. No, I like it. The, 
All right, so we're gonna they're gonna talk it over. Apparently, it looks like they are gonna go for two. They're gonna talk this over. If they get it, the clock doesn't stop. If they don't, well, it does. The only time the clock would stop is if the team takes a timeout or an injury. And this young man here is walking off on his own power, albeit slowly, but good to see him walking off on his own power. So who you got tomorrow in the NFL, week one? Who are your upsets tomorrow? You know what I like? I like the Detroit Lions tomorrow. I like the Detroit Lions tomorrow. I like the Lions tomorrow. I like the Raiders over the Ravens. Although I would never encourage gambling. I do like six and a half points in the Pittsburgh Steelers in Buffalo. And again, just for fun. All right, they're going for two here. Turns, gives, inside. They got it. And we got us a running clock here in Port St. Lucie. 35 nothing. Nakari McIntyre in. So that'll, we'll be out of here in 11 minutes and 28 seconds, ladies and gentlemen, down there on the field. Conducting, show the show the running clock. My first running clock game of the year. Have you had one yet? No. We used to get them all the time. That's how you know Brevard County High School football is getting better because we used to get running clocks all the time. learned from Coach Palmer, a little tidbit of information, a head coach for Port St. Lucie and Coach Ainsley went to college together. And, well, if that's the case, then that means they also did it with Coach Smith as well. And the coach is, the head coach is Chris Dent, and he was a quarterback at Chowan University. Chowan, I'm not sure, I'm not sure how to say it. Chowan. Derek's not watching. I guarantee you Derek's not watching. Yeah, all right, take care. Coach Palmer, that's when you know the game's in hand when the coaches leave the roof. Once again, thank you. Again, anything helps. The Brevard Sports Network, 9.47 to go, Port St. Lucie. And that pass is incomplete, and it's just in time as the drizzle begins. So second down and 10. As the clock winding down, if you need to call for a ride, please start doing so now. <laughs> The public address announcer just said, if you need a ride, students, please do so now because <laughs> the clock is a running. 9.13 to go in the game. Clock moving, 35 nothing Panthers. And they still hitting. So who will be our players of the game today? I think uh, L.J. Turner and Joseph Tenta on offense. And I think defensively, you look at what that defensive line did up front today with that nice push. Throws deep. And the twos are in for coach, or a lot of twos are in. I like Kevon McCullough today. 
And so I, 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 I think Kevon McCullough is our defensive player of the game. So Tenta and Turner on the offensive side and Kevon McCullough on the defensive side today. So they will be our players of the game. As the Panthers will get out of here with a win, and they will move to one and one. Who do you guys have next week? Who? Oh, Auburndale next week. Got to be a tough one. But, and the Jaguars will stop the clock with a timeout. Uh, yeah, the Bloodhounds of Auburndale. While we have a break in the action, I will remind students again, if you need to call for a ride home, please begin to do so now. Please do not wait for the end of the game. <laughs> All right, so next week around the county, let's see what we got going on here. We got Heritage at Auburndale next week as week four is here already. Quarter of the way through the season. Space Coast is at Astronaut, so one of those two programs will get their first win of the year. Orangewood Christian will be at Cocoa Beach. O'Galley is at Gateway. Goodness gracious, that's not going to be easy. Heritage at Auburndale. Holy Trinity at Interlochen. Melbourne's at St. Cloud in a must-win. Oh, my. Wide open, busted coverage. Quarterback missed him. Melbourne's at St. Cloud in a must-win district game next week. Liberty's at MCC, Palm Bay at Merritt Island, Bayside at Rockledge, Satellite at Titusville, Vieira's at East River, Merritt Island Christian at Warner Christian in eight-man football. So that's your schedule next week. Seven minutes to go. Seven minutes. You know, congratulations to the to, to, to the Heritage Panthers, and I'll tell you why here in just a second. You might say, well, it's one win, but that's all they got last year. This is a big win for this young football team. It really is. To do it on the road the next day when you were – I mean, it's a, it's a huge disruption to have to get all your student athletes back together again, put them on a bus, bring them an hour and a half south, Kudos to Mark Ainsley and his staff for doing so and coming down and getting this 35 nothing win. Heritage Panthers last year didn't pick up a win until later in the season. Now they get it here in their second game of the year. They're 1-1 one and, one and have a little momentum. Going into what's going to be an extremely tough match next week at Auburndale. Once again, the coaches are Mark Ainsley, Tim Baker, Mike Benson, Bill Palmer, Brooke Lubelski, Dan Holmes, Scotty Raymond, Eddie Kinzel, Brian Osterley, Josh Hungerford. And A.J. Almer, the athletic director, and Almer is taking over at quarterback. We want to thank Justin, the president of the Booster Club, Heritage Panther Booster Club, play a big key role as well. Throws, caught, cuts it back, and down at the two as Ulmer comes in and sets the Panthers up for another score. Trey Ulmer. So it'll be first and goal to go from the one with 440 to go. I don't know that they'll – they may just run four running plays here. I know Mark Ainsley, and I know. But it's good to get Trey some work. Trey's a junior. And you want to get your guys, Nakari McIntyre's in the backfield. 
You want to get your guy some work. Wouldn't be surprised to see him just give it to McIntyre. Nope, it's going to be Almer. Almer. Trey Almer in for the touchdown. And it's 41 0. Trey Almer gets in. I hope that's a uh, Panther horn and not a tornado siren. It is a Panther. Thank you very much. All right, uh, it's the first time I heard it, so it scared me just a bit. <laughs> we are on top of a roof. <laughs> it, it scared me the first time it happened. After okay. The first time, so. And Ulmer is the holder for a <laughs> Villa kicker. You got scared and excited all at the same time. <laughs> so Ulmer will stay on to assist with the extra point. The snap, the hold, the kick is good. And... With three minutes and ten seconds to go, running clock, the Heritage Panthers on top, 42 to nothing. And they'll take their good old time here, and I don't blame them. So both of these teams will move to one and one. I'd like to thank Countdown Caleb Brown for producing today's game. I'd like to thank... Coach Mark Ainsley for getting us set up with Coach Den. And again, I'd like to thank Coach, uh, the Athletic Director, Mr. A.J. Almer. You never know. You might be seeing Brevard Sports Network and a lot more Heritage Panther games coming up. Avila set to kick off. And we'll probably get maybe two plays from Port St. Lucie here. They stayed on sides. Nice kick. Fielded at the 15. Don't want to give up any points here. And sticking out his arm. And may, that hurts. Nice tackle there as he got his arm out was Brian Osterley. Osterley. Went down, busted the seam, and made the tackle. Good play on special teams. Change of possession, 130 clock running. So much easier this way, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Back across, little in route here. Quick pass and just hold him up for another minute. Ripping the football. Yep. It's not just trying to bring the guy down. One minute to go. One minute in the game. And Port St. Lucie, believe it or not, the closest they've got to the end zone today was that 73-yard pass completion in which they fumbled. And that's going to be offsides. Clock has stopped with 42.9 seconds to go. That's going to be a five-yard offside penalty, or too many men on the field is what it was. Got an extra guy on the field. <laughs> or not. So, 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 Whitehead waved it off. So, no foul on the play then. So now we'll wind the clock and 40 seconds to go. This will be the final play of the game. Even if he gets out of bounds, it won't matter. He can step, oh, that should be 15. And no, it won't be the no, final. Be and a little extracurricular there. You don't want to see that. 28.2. I don't think so. Unless they threw another one. Yes, they did. Did they? Could they be offsetting. Well, that was it. <laughs> Coach Angie's telling these guys, come on, guys, you got to be smart. Heritage hardly penalized at all today. 
at all. In fact, that is the first penalty on Heritage since the first quarter. Yeah, offsetting. Run the clock, let's go. 15 yards up, 15 yards back. Run the clock, let's go, says the white hat. 20 seconds. This is definitely going to be the last play of the game. Incomplete. The clock will not stop, and that'll do it. The Heritage Panthers will move to one and one as they defeat Port St. Lucie 42 to nothing. So I'd like to thank all of our sponsors. I'd like to thank Caleb Brown, Coach Mark Ainsley, and Athletic Director A.J. Armour. So for Caleb Brown, I'm Alan Slaughterzinski. This has been a presentation of the Brevard Sports Network. Once again, your final score. Heritage Panthers move to one and one with a 42-0 win over Port St. Lucie. Have a great week, everybody. We'll see you again real soon. Enjoy your NFL Sunday.